Hello and welcome to the Run Testers with me and Nick talking along with the rest of the Run Testers the, over the course of this video about our favourite races. Now I challenged uh, each of the Run Testers to pick two of their favourite races, one longer distance one and one shorter distance one. So we're going to dive in and each of the Run Testers is going to let us know which races they've picked and why. <laughs> So Nick, you've done a lot of races and you've talked a lot about the various races that you've done over the years. How easy was it for you to pick two races? It was a challenge, uh, I will say that. And actually, the two came quite naturally to me, like which I think is a good sign. They just they you know they they're the ones that first sprung to mind. I was thinking of a marathon, my marathon sprang straight to mind, and actually then shorter races it did just pop up. There's loads of other brilliant races, but these two naturally occurred to me as the ones I wanted to put in this video. Cool. Okay, then. Well, what have you picked for your sort of shorter distance, uh, uh, longer, long run? Short distance, short distance, well, long run. Trying to think, because well, you, you can't really pick a 100 metre race, could you? Yes, yeah, 100 metres. It's the Olympic final. I'd like <laughs> to do that race. Um, my short distance race is the Friday night under the lights 5K, uh, which is almost emblematic of what is a new breed of races popping up around the country, which is these very, very fast 5K events that are set up on you know perfect courses for PB setting that have maybe some kind of qualifying time standard and just encourage massive packs of runners to go and just smash their PBs. And I think it's almost an extension of the park run craze in that people know what 5K feels like now and people want to set PBs. And actually having events scattered throughout the year which are dedicated to running fast is so great. So the Friday Night Under Lights one that I do is in Battersea Park in London. Um, it's got a fairly strict qualifying time, but there are other great Battersea Park races like the Shri Trimnoy 5K races or any run-throughs there. If you, It's just basically a pancake flat, two-lap course, which doesn't even really have sharp corners. Like The curve's beautifully round. It's like being on a, a road track almost. Um, and it's the most exhilarating feeling I've ever had in a race, starting that race. Like I went out in this huge pack of runners, and I'm used to you know, events where they get spread out quite a bit at the front in particular, and I'm running by myself quite quickly. And I was just running in this pack going, God, this is a bit intense. Should I try and get to the front or eat out the back? And I looked down and go, no, you're running you know, bang on the pace you want to be. You just, you just for once in your life are doing it with 40 other people and um, <laughs> just got dragged around. It was just, you like I said, it was an adrenaline rush. I got dragged around this course, my PB, around 15.30 that day, and there were 20 runners finishing you know, two seconds either side of me, just streaming in this long line of runners would all just basically run up this massive pack around Battersea Park. And it was so much fun. <laughs> so, and there's like three events next year in Battersea Park with these guys. I think Podium do a 5K somewhere up in the north. All these kind of events. If you've, you know, if you've got the time to go and do them, they're great. And if you haven't, I urge anyone to go and find a really fast 5K sometimes because park runs brilliant. Um, but the courses are off, you know, just in local parks and they're there for fun and to get people out and active. But occasionally, just going down to an event where you can really go PB seeking is, yeah, a, a feeling that you don't get often in running when you're running in a pack like that of everyone dragging each other around. It was amazing. I've, I've never done one of these. I don't know. What, oh, I'm still, I haven't done that one because I could get it. Couldn't. I would be allowed to do it. <laughs> what's, what's the cutoff? Is it something ridiculous like 17 minutes? Um, yeah, I think uh, that one is. I think the one I did was 16. I think it's like the some of them are 15:45, some of them are, are much lower. Some are 17, and I'd say if you're you got yourself, Tom, the Shri Chimnoy races in Battersea Park are really good, and there's the pace is uh, you know there's, there's people basically of every pace from like 15 minutes up towards you know mid 20s, and there's good packs everywhere, and especially around your time, Tom, I think there'll be a lot of people running it really quick, and there throughout the summer they're very cheap races, um, and then there's always run through in Battersea Park um, because and that will give you a really broad range of people, and it, the course is so fast you only need a couple of people to rerun with you, but yeah, if you can go to those like under the lights ones and get in that big pack, it's a feeling like no other. Nice. Okay, that's a good good choice. Uh, I, I, I didn't even know. I, I knew about two of those, but I didn't know more of them existed. Um, all right, let's. Uh, okay, let's go for. A, I'm presuming you picked a marathon. Yep. Yep. Picked what have you gone for? Uh, so marathon was probably a bit harder because. I haven't really done a marathon I didn't like, apart from Bill Bow, where I got disqualified for no reason. Uh, um, but like, he, the one I picked is the Valencia Marathon. So all the ones I've done, Loch Ness is the most beautiful. It's a fantastic marathon. Love Loch Ness. London's obviously my hometown marathon, but it's a little bit stressful because it's it is my hometown marathon. Often working it, lots of crowds. Berlin's rapid, but Valencia just combines everything into this one perfect event that's just the right size. Like it's becoming more and more popular everyone knows it's a really fast course so more people are going there but it's just a little bit out of the big marathon season it's a bit more low-key as a result and it's 
just a beautiful place to go and run a marathon. So the course is brilliant. I think it's as fast as anything in the world. It's right up there with Berlin. Um, the field is amazing. There's people running at every speed, running well in big groups. The time of year is absolutely perfect. So it's early December. So you train through the UK autumn, the best time to do uh, marathon training in the in the UK, I think. It's not as wet and cold as the winter. Um, then you head over early December, hopefully nail your marathon in perfect conditions in Spain in the winter, and then relax into Christmas when you're not training it's um and that is the feeling that the, when I, I've done Valencia once um and I'm going to do it again this year but Valencia my first was my first marathon with my coach it went brilliantly ran a progression run as I was finishing it was just kind of like I've absolutely nailed that it's a big pb best of all it's Christmas now and you know and everything is going well I do love Christmas so um and it's always just a beautiful city. It's a great running city. Obviously, most of the world records are now set in Valencia, apart from the marathons, because it's not as big an event as Berlin. But um, you've got the big canal, that, well, old canal. I don't know what it is, actually. It's this disused canal that runs through the centre of the city that's been made into a big park with a running track the whole way. It's, you know, it's, the support is good, but it's not overwhelming. It's, it's people. There's always a couple of people you know there, but not everyone you know is obsessed with it, like London. So, it's yeah, it's the perfect balance of everything. Fantastic marathon. Great choice, and I was that would have been my second uh, pick for marathon because as because we went together, didn't we? We uh, yeah. Uh, not I I hadn't trained properly for it, but I had a <laughs> had a good time. Uh, was back in Tom's I, um, normal marathon days, where he'd, just, he'd rock up in a city, find out what the yeah. local McDonald's specialty was, eat that, <laughs> and go and run a pretty good time. A couple of beers. <laughs> um, yeah, I I, I I I think it's fantastic, and and think about well, there's a couple of big. Big, big things that I like about Valencia. One is the just the streets are so wide, so you yeah. never have to worry about like bottlenecking or anything like that. But also, it's it's like got everything. You can go to the beach after the race. You can yeah. go into the city. You can go through the park, and it's it's just a fantastic. And, and you've got that whole that finish line is just incredible. I've never seen anything like it before in a race. Yeah, you come down into the yeah, the, the kind of I don't know what it's, called. it's like the oceanographic museum. You go down onto the middle of it, and it it is superb. I also would say this for it: uh, Valencia is a lot cheaper to go to than most places. Like it's yes, getting a bit more yeah. popular now, but like we're going away for a week as a family in Valencia, and if I did that in Berlin or one of the American marathons, you basically remortgaging to afford that. Whereas Valencia, you can get a hotel quite late in the day or an Airbnb, and the flights. Well, obviously yeah. quite cheap from you know Britain but in most places they're not too expensive so that makes it just a much friendlier experience and less stressful all round so yeah fantastic marathon everyone should do it excellent okay Tom time for your picks let's start with your short race pick so this was a, a tough one as it probably was for you actually it didn't sound like that it was that tough for you I've never done any <laughs> really cool races like that uh, no, my, my short distance pick is uh, Greenwich Park, uh, 10, 5K or 10K. Um, I've done, there's a few that do um, run through, do loads of races there, but I think there's some other organisers that have done races there. So I've done a few different ones and they're all pretty much the same sort of thing. But the thing about Greenwich Park is it's really quite hard and it's quite <laughs> it's difficult to find a race, a short distance race that hard in London. Um, so it stands out from the other ones for me because the other ones can sort of blend into each other. You talked about Battersea Park, and Battersea Park is great for fast times, and there's not many 10k races in in London that are, are as flat as that. Um, but equally, the other side of the scale, I think Greenwich is the one to go for if you you want something a bit tougher. Um, and the the other thing I find about it as well is, have you run Greenwich before? Uh, I've run in Greenwich Park. I know I've done that awful hill up. Um, yeah, that's in the races, but I don't don't it's, think I've raced it. It, mentally it's such an interesting race because you it gets quite high that that hill is quite a long fairly steep hill that goes on for 500 meters or something yeah. um and if you do the 10k course on a lot of the the races it you got that three times um but you also get an incredibly fast downhill like a really long fast downhill so strategically it's a really interesting race because you can sort of plan it around how best you can manage it. And I've had some really fast times in that race, despite the fact that there's this hill you've got to get up three times. Um, <laughs> and the other thing is it just gets a incredible view at the top every time you yeah. every time you go around. It's it's a really beautiful race to go and do, which is so close to the city that it's um, it's it's well worth giving a go. Um, but maybe not one if you've just started running and you're, you're looking for your first 10K. Maybe if you're 
you're trying to branch out a bit uh, and you've done a few 10Ks in the in the capital and you want to try something a little bit harder. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess it's the South London equivalent. Well, I, I used to live next to Ali Pali in the north mm. and it's great views, but a pretty unpleasant climb up. I, I did a 10K in Ali Pali once and that was that was probably hard. I, 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 there's not many races in Ali Pali. I think Run Through did one once and it, it didn't really <laughs> happen again, <laughs> presumably because it was too hard. Um, yeah, the park run there, they don't go all the way to the top. They just do like loops at the bottom. It's still pretty hard. It's not a very good part. Like good part yeah. for a time and it's actually not great because you don't get to the top so you don't even get a view so you're just doing the hill three times but <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah interesting park to live next to all my runs so I have to basically go up a hill like that well the other good thing about Greenwich as well is if you're uh, looking at like Run Britain rankings and things because a lot of the runners there aren't particularly maybe haven't trained for hills or anything like that I normally come a lot higher in the rankings <laughs> in that race than uh, if I'm just doing a normal flat race so uh, even if I get slightly slower time I'm normally looks more impressive on the on, on my overall uh, where i come in the race so yeah big fan of that uh, that greenwich race so um and i think there's they do a couple of christmas ones there as well so you can go there and uh, maybe get a mince pie <laughs> for anyone who knows so much about their run britain ranking as you but yeah fair play <laughs> absolutely obsessed absolutely obsessed um, all right so yeah. greenwich is short run uh, and then i'm guessing you're going for a marathon for your long one of course yeah i'm going for a marathon uh this was quite a tough one because no, I did not choose Chicago Marathon. Um, I was about to say, Chicago's banned, actually. We just got this random uh, list. We banned some, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, I've not picked it anyway. So uh, I, I, Valencia was one of the very close ones I picked as my favorite marathon, but my, the one I'm going for, and oddly, it's very hilly as well. I don't know why. I, I'm not a massively good hill runner, but uh, Madrid Marathon. Um, oh. Which, which is a marathon is not spicy. many people have done. Yeah, um, I'm not, I've, I've done nothing about the Madrid Marathon, Tom. Sell it to me. So the Madrid Marathon is it's a really interesting one because it is uh, it takes place in April. It's just starting to get a bit hotter, but it's not too hot. Madrid's actually surprisingly not that hot, uh, not boiling hot in April. And I did think it would be when, I went, when we, we went out. Um, but the thing about Madrid Marathon is that it's not particularly well known outside of the sort of local area. So it's not that many runners that do it, um, but it is un- incredibly hilly. It is one of the hilly. It must be one of the hilliest um, marathons for elevation. I mean, you get like like uh, Edinburgh has, has got quite a lot of um, height to it, but most of that is downhill. Whereas yeah. I think in the Madrid one, most of it is uphill. Um, and I think for like the first five k, you're just going uphill steadily, Jeez. and you eventually get to the point where you're almost at the top of Madrid. And Madrid, Madrid is gets it's got some pretty big hills in it, and you sort of run right to the top of it and overlook Madrid. You feel awful by that point, but it's nice. It's a nice view, and then you get a lovely downhill. But then the last 5K is all uphill again. Um, so strategically, it's a very difficult marathon, but it's just quite interesting to do. I, I wouldn't say to anyone go there and try and get a PB, but if you want to go to a really interesting route where you sort of wind around the hill as it goes up to the to the top, it's definitely, I've never seen that in a marathon before. And it's Spanish marathon as well. And I've always said Spanish marathons are the best um, one because you've got really wide roads, but also Spanish cities are the best. Out of all the places that I've I, I've gone out for after a marathon, Spain is my favourite because it's just everything's open. You have a great time. Germany things close on a Sunday quite early. I found in a lot of uh, German marathons. So um, yeah, uh, Madrid marathon absolutely fantastic. I think Spanish marathon. I do agree on Spanish marathons. Bilbao, notwithstanding, obviously. But um, uh, I, the only problem with Spanish marathons is in the morning before the race. It's on a Sunday. Everything shut for um, religious reasons. I guess. Well, I don't know. Barcelona. I had a, a big problem where I really needed to go to a pharmacist. Tom, <laughs> let's put it that way. Right. And, uh, could not do that. But um, interesting. I'm, you're having a Madrid marathon. It, it sounds it sounds terrible. Uh, but I think it'll be yeah. a fun one to go and roll through. But yeah, like you say, it's a good one to go with a uh, bunch of mates. Uh, not going for a PB, uh, but just having a laugh and then. One wanted to go and have a few beers afterwards and some good food as well great food in madrid sounds good nice one so choosing my all-time favorite marathon is a little bit of a tricky one i've run 50 marathons in total all across the world i've run all the biggies really like boston new york berlin london i've done paris I've done Chicago. I've also done plenty of the kind of slightly less well-known ones in Europe, Copenhagen, Hamburg, Prague. I've done Seville, I've done Valencia. So many, many marathons out there. And rather than sort of pick a city marathon that's kind of, I'll say is my all-time favorite, I've gone for a race that's much closer to home and one that I think most people will actually really enjoy if they go and do it. And this one is the New Forest Marathon. 
Now this is a mixed terrain race that takes you 26.2 miles through the absolutely stunning New Forest National Park. It's about an hour and a half outside of London by train in the south of England and it's a wonderful, wonderful race. It's brilliantly well organised. You have this huge big kind of race start village because it's on, it's basically held on this enormous kind of showground in Brockenhurst and essentially that makes for a really, really calm, effortless, easy bag drop plenty of toilets, nice and spacious. You just feel like there isn't a calmer start to a marathon, I don't think. And then once you finish the race, that turns into kind of the post-race village with there's loads of food trucks, there's stalls, there's live music. And if the sun is out, there's just a really good vibe for the finish as well. It's definitely a more testing course with lots of off-road sections. There's, there's plenty of tarmac too, but there's sort of lots of kind of quite steady hills, few little steep hills that I definitely think kind of pushes people to the limits. But it's pretty much running in this sort of amazing landscape of kind of these sort of flat sort of breakout moorlands through forests. It's just amazing. Often I've been running so many times when I've had wild ponies sort of galloping alongside me. Just the last time I did it this year, there were some that cut across in front of me. Absolutely stunning wildlife views. I also love the fact that there are also 5K, 10K, half marathon options that happen around this day. So you can take the family there or you can go with other runners who might not be doing your distance. There are junior races as well. So if you've got family, you can get the kids involved. It's got that really nice kind of local family atmosphere. And this marathon takes place every year in September and it will cost for the full marathon is 57 pounds. And you can usually find that there are still places available quite close to that race start. So it's not one that's that tricky to get into. So my second pick for a race that I'd recommend people to try is the Royal Parks Half Marathon. Now this was my first ever half marathon, so obviously it's got a special place in my heart. I'll never forget crossing that finish line and having run around the sites of London in this race to pick up that first half marathon medal. I've now run it four or five times and it's just one that I go back to time and time again. Now one of the things I love about it is that I feel like it's got a similar vibe to the London Marathon just on a smaller scale. The course will take you out through some of the sites that you know you might pass on the London Marathon. You start from Hyde Park and you go out and down through Hyde Park Corner, then you go down past Buckingham Palace, you see the Mall, you get to run past the House of Parliament and Big Ben, you see Westminster Bridge, you come back up through Trafalgar Square, there's so many different, you see Buckingham Palace, there's so many different sort of sites that you get in the first section of this race. Then it puts you into Hyde Park and you do this kind of park, sort of twisty, turny sort of course that some people aren't such a fan of. It does get a little bit kind of mundane in the in the park bit and it is a twisty turning course so not necessarily one you go chasing pbs but in Hyde Park it's often really well supported because there's lots of places the supporters can come and jump from one to two places to see you run and I think that also creates this really nice kind of well supported buzz that you sort of get now in the Royal Parks half I think you often get quite a lot of beginners there are a lot of people running for charities and they tend to bring out the crowd so people come and support and it's it is really well supported for a half marathon so you do get a bit of that buzz and I really like that it's brilliantly well organized. There is a, an excellent race village, again, with good food options. And you always get one of these rather lovely kind of wooden medals as well. I think the Royal Parks might have been among the first people to go for the sort of wooden design medal, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that. And the other thing, I can't guarantee this, but it always seems to luck out with one of those bright, beautiful, crisp, clear, sort of sunny but not hot autumn days. And that makes running through London and through Hyde Park a kind of wonderful experience. So there are around 16,000 runners in this race, so it's pretty big. Good mixture of abilities, plenty of new runners, people kind of testing themselves. Perhaps a sign of kind of how popular it is is that there is a ballot for this race and it's actually quite hard to get into. But if you're looking for something that has a little bit of that kind of London Marathon vibe, then I'd say this one is a really good one to take a look at. I think it's an excellent race to do for your first half marathon if you're considering taking that first step. The Royal Parks Half Marathon costs £59 to enter and it takes place in October each year. <laughs> My favourite race of all time, despite my love of marathons and road races, is actually a trail race run by the guys from Maverick Race who specialise in races in areas of natural beauty. It's the Maverick Dorset Race. Um, it's not quite the same route as when I ran it, but it goes from Swanwich along the Jurassic Coast of Old Harry Rocks. There's a long, a medium and a short version, uh, 25k, I think it's 10k and 8k varying from 45, 40 pounds, sorry, down to 25 pounds for entry. The next version of it is um, in June 2023, although there's a, a night version of it, which I haven't run, um, but sounds kind of terrifying and cool in equal measure. Um, the race vibe is just be just fantastic. Um, the village is, race village is great. There's good pizza, there's beer. There's, it's just such a chilled out and beautiful race. And yet people still kind of give it their all. It's not an easy route, but it's absolutely fantastic. Can't rate, rate it high enough.
I really struggled to decide what my favourite marathon of all time was. Um, I've run Boston, I've run London, I've run Berlin, I've run Florence with my PB. Um, but I keep coming back to the Lake Garda Marathon in Italy. Um, it's in the Italian lakes. It's a little race, um, or it was when I ran it in uh, 2016. Um, but it's just so much fun. Um, they used to have they have a shuttle uh, between the start and finish. It now starts in Limoni on one side of the lake and goes round to the top of the lake through Tobole and then back down to Mount Cesane on the other side. Um, it's a fantastic place to be. Um, you can go up Monte Baldo afterwards and look out over the lakes. Um, there's fantastic pizza and ice cream. The support is just lovely. Um, it's a beautiful place to race and it takes place in March now. It used to be October, but um, this year's one is on the, well, the race weekend is the 24th to the 26th of March in 2023. It's 45 euros to enter. Um, there's a half marathon and a kids run as well, but I'd really recommend it. It was the first race I ever did abroad. Um, I've done it, I think it's three times now, and it's just so much fun and such a nice place to be. Uh, so Lake Garda Marathon in Italy. <laughs> My favourite 10k is not one race but six. It's the Regents Park 10k race series organised by Mornington Chasers and it goes from October all the way through to March. It's the first Sunday of every month. It's £25 if you're unaffiliated, £23 per race if you're affiliated and the more races that you do and book in advance the you get a discount basically. Um, but what's great is that because you know it's on every month, you can either use it to keep you going through the colder months and um, do them every month, or because it's there reliably, you can, if you're feeling particularly fresh, you know, marathon, autumn marathon, half marathon season's gone well, you can go, okay, right, feeling recovered, here I go, I'm going to have a crack at this. So the course is three laps, so just over two miles per lap. Um, you go past the back of London Zoo, so it's nice. You can see the camels uh, most times. And it's easy. I think it's an easy one to pace because, you know, you've got those three mats. You can, you can see the clock each time you finish a lap and uh, know what you're doing the next one. Obviously, they get progressively harder, but that's part of the fun, isn't it? Um, it's my PB course. I think there's also the summer series is run by the race organiser. They're good as well. Um, it's basically the same setup, six um, for the summer, six for the winter. But the winter is uh, morning's chasers, the summer is the race organiser. It's my PB course, I ran 44.40, I think there, um, a long time ago, 2019. Um, but it's a lovely, it's a lovely course and three laps so not not everyone loves a lap but I really when you're aiming for a PB going for a time I think that's a great one it's really friendly really inclusive and um, is everything you need a reliably measured course uh, they've been doing it a long time they know exactly how far that is and chip timing bit of flapjack at the end and that's all you need isn't it I've run 21 marathons um, but in that, about 12 official different races. I've been back to some races a few times. Snowdonia Marathon or Marathon Erie um, is one that I would absolutely love to go back to. I've only run it once. I was entered twice, but, but couldn't run the second time that I was entered. Um, and I love it. It's a brilliant race. It's probably my slowest. I think I was 4.59. I ran with a friend. You run um, around Snowdonia circumnavigating uh, Mount Snowden or um, and it's just great it's it's challenging it's mainly road um, there's some kind of looser paths and a little bit kind of off-road um, bits but mainly mainly road I'd say it's a brilliant atmosphere you start in Lamberis um, and you head out it's tough. The the it's October. It's the end of October, so it's um, not the not the sunniest of conditions generally. But the um, camaraderie between runners is is really great, and there's a there's there's brilliant scenery everywhere. Um, the 
last <laughs> you finish back at Lamberis you do like one big loop uh, from miles 22 to about 24 and a half you are going uphill and we're talking like big hill bordering on mountain um, so that is tough but you know that once you get to the top from mile 24 and a half down to the finish is all downhill now that sounds that sounds fun doesn't it that sounds easy it's not easy it is fun though because it's so downhill that a lot of it I wasn't I wasn't running <laughs> I was kind of nervously going down trying not to fall over in this last mile of the marathon uh, there were people slipping over because it's a bit off road and through through a field at that point then you hit a bit of road and it's kind of half a mile to go and you run back into into the village and through the center of the village along the along the main street and the everyone's out and cheering and it is great um, and you've got a slate coaster as the the year that I did it, you got a slate coaster from local slate instead of a medal, which was brilliant. And then you can go to Pete's Eats in Lamberis and tuck into some massive portions of food. So it's a ballot entry now. So if you do want to do it, the ballot opens, I think, in December for a week. And then the uh, results are announced in January I think on the 1st of January 2023 for the 2023 race. So that is an exciting bit. Um, enter a ballot, find out on New Year's Day with a hangover that you've got a marathon to train for. Um, it's also a Saturday race, a Saturday marathon, which is uh, novel, but great because you get extra day recovery uh, the next day. Or what I did was, um, because it's the same weekend as Dublin Marathon, we ran Snowdonia on the Saturday, got the ferry across to Ireland and ran Dublin, which was on the Monday. So my favourite marathon race would probably be Seville Marathon. Now, I have done other Spanish uh, marathons. I, Barcelona was my first ever marathon. I've also done Valencia, which is an excellent race and city to be in as well. And I think Seville kind of pips it for me or is you know the, probably the most memorable one that I've done for kind of a lot of reasons it's at, it's at a really good time I think of the year it's generally you know very early kind of February kind of time where you know you've got to obviously train during those winter months but what you get in return is conditions that I think are really really strong for racing and racing quick it's a nice flat course and um, there's no wind so you don't really have to battle or worry about battling that as well and it's just you know i've really enjoyed running i really enjoyed running that um run i did it in 2019 um i think you know i was really surprised by the level of support from the locals as well which i think you know you're not really sure when you really need that extra bit of motivation out on the course in a different country i thought you know the locals really got behind having that uh, marathon um in their city um and again, the weather is really, Seville is a great place to be in uh, for a race. If it's a nice day, if it's a nice weekend, you know, it's a beautiful city. And I think it's a really scenic route as well and places as well. And I think to top it off as well, at the end of the race, they do hand out a Seville orange, uh, which is a nice touch, I think, you know, um, to kind of finish the race. Um, it's a great medal as well. The, the medal I got from 2019 is really, really nice. Um, but yeah, overall, really enjoyed uh, running that race. I think it's a nice, quick one. I think it's a good time of the year to go to Seville as well I think the conditions are very very good for marathon racing if you've you've been sensible and trained over those kind of winter months as well it's it's one worth having a look at um definitely based on my kind of experience so the second race I'm going to pick, and it's definitely a race that I imagine not a lot of people outside the UK will have heard of. It is the Scadbury Park Five Mile Trail Race. Um, now that is, it's based in Chislehurst, which is kind of in South East London. Um, now I did it a few years ago, I think 2018, 2019. Um, I signed up the night before and had a few drinks. My mate convinced me to go over and do it. I got an Uber in the morning. There was about 200 people um, racing it, I think. Um, you can do the two and a half mile or the five mile. Now, it's a really kind of pretty kind of uh, route through the uh, nature reserve of two or if you're doing the five mile there's a killer couple of hills at the end of each lap so while you think you're going nice and quick through you've got that bit at the end that you know there's a horrible bit of elevation to really kind of test your legs and really get you through a quick time i think i finished 14th overall when i did it um 
it was tough but i actually really enjoyed it and you know i haven't done many five mile races but it really was an enjoyable race distance and like doing it off-road as well in a really nice um part of london as well so i would definitely say it's one that i really liked there was cake at the end as well so you know who doesn't like cake at the end of a race a really nice medal um but yeah i think if you're in the uk you're looking for a you know there's not a lot of five mile races out there these days um that's definitely one to look out if you from abroad and you you end up in this part of part of the world and i definitely think it's well worth trying out if you you like your trail races you think you can go after a good time on a two and a half or five mile kind of route uh but just be mindful there's some pretty tough hills at the end of that uh course as well so yeah that is the scabbury uh, park five mile trail race which you can also do a two and a half mile version of as well Okay, so that's it from us. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from latest road and trail shoes, as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. Don't forget, we've also got our monthly podcast that comes out at the end of every month. If you go into the caption below, you can find a link to the latest podcast uh, from the podcast provider of your choice. Thanks a lot for watching.